If you've decided to cut joinery by hand, you've learned that there's many different types of sauce, even different families of sauce, Japanese and Western. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Japanese sauce. If you'd like to learn more about the Western sauce, we have a link to a video on those. Japanese sauce come in a few varieties, but before we talk about those, let's talk a little bit about teeth. Japanese saw teeth are distinguished for their intended use, cutting across the grain or cross cutting and cutting along the grain or rip cutting. However, Japanese saw teeth are designed such that each tooth has three cutting edges, except for rip cut teeth, which have two. This tooth geometry design allows the Japanese saw to cut straight and smooth, yet still be able to rip and cross cut. The hardness of Japanese saw teeth allow them to stay sharp for a long time, providing a really decent service life. More traditional Japanese saws have their teeth hardened in such a way that allows you to sharpen them with a specialized feather file, whereas other saw plates have their teeth hardened through a process called impulse hardening. Those are too hard to be filed or sharpened. However, those plates can be replaced via replacement plates that install easily into the handle and get you back to sharp with zero downtime. Japanese saws can be with or without a back. A dozuki saw features a folded back that provides rigidity to the plate, enabling a high degree of precision. It also has the thinnest plate of all the Japanese saws, making it ideal for fine joinery such as dovetails and tenons. A ryoba saw has no back but offers teeth on both sides for crosscuts and rips. So what you give up in rigidity, you gain in flexibility of efficiency by having both types of teeth on the same saw. The Ryoba saw works well for both general purpose cutting and for flush trimming screw hole plugs. A Kataba saw has no back and only has teeth on one side of the blade. The Kataba generally comes as a crosscut saw, but rip cut blades are available. One of the defining features of many Japanese saws is the long straight handle, traditionally wood wrapped with rattan. This style of handle can be used single handedly or gripped with both hands if desired. Backed saws are always easier to steer than non-backed saws. However, the depth of cut will be limited by the depth of the plate beneath the back on the saw, whereas on a non-backed saw, the depth of cut is not limited. Now that we know a little bit about the different types of Japanese saws, let's talk about what sets them apart from Western saws. Japanese saws have their teeth oriented such that it cuts on the pull stroke as the saw is coming towards you whereas Western saws have their teeth oriented such that they cut on the push stroke as the blade is going away from you. If you're new to hand saws, starting the cut can take a bit of practice to master. Most users will find starting a cut with the Japanese saw to be easier than starting a cut with the Western saw. Cutting on the pull stroke doesn't require as thick of a plate as the push stroke does. This allows Japanese saws to have thinner plates than their Western counterparts. Thinner plates mean thinner kerfs or area of wood that is removed by the saw plate during a cut. Narrow kerfs mean less friction, which means less effort is required to make the cut. The choice of which family of saw to use really comes down to personal preference and intended use. For example, if you'd like to cut fine joinery like dovetails and tenons with a Japanese saw, the thin plate and folded back on this dozuki saw would be an excellent choice. Whereas if you just want to do some random carcass work, the rip cut and cross cut teeth on this Ryoba saw might be a good choice. Whether it's Western or Japanese, a finely tuned and properly sharpened saw is going to cut wood very well. While there are some saws tailored to specific cuts, there's no saw that's just going to make dovetails. You do that. So the really important choice that you make is the choice to practice. So don't get too bogged down in teeth per inch or Western or Japanese. Just grab a piece of wood, make some layout lines, and saw them until you hit them. Well, that wraps up the overview on Japanese saws. If you'd like to learn more about Western saws, click the link to our video on different types and sizes of Western saws. And as always, make sure to check out the whole line of saws at highlandwoodworking.com.